Hi everybody and welcome to my painting tutorial, Light of Hope. Hope you guys enjoy this one. I'm going to be listing all the colors and brushes below the video in the description. Working on a gray primed 11 by 14 canvas, we're going to be using the following colors, white, neon yellow warm, neon red, blue violet, and black, as well as a number 30 filbert brush. I've got a little bit of water on it right now and I'm going to pick up my white to start and I'm just going to simply go up and down and gentle brush strokes back and forth and keep it different, some widths thicker, some thinner, some a little thicker, and uh, in transparency, I'm meaning. So you want to have a little bit more light in some areas and a little bit less in others. So it's all about creating that light atmosphere in the background first and building up in layers. So for our next step, simply going to take a little bit of that light blue violet and add it a little bit here and there just to start enhancing the temperature of the painting a little bit this is a nice color choice for creating your cool shadows in your paintings it also looks great with the peachy tones we'll be adding a little bit later on i'm going to take a little bit of each white and blue violet and start tapping in with the same brush to create some foliage and branches I really like using filbert brushes for painting foliage and branches. I think that it makes a really nice, soft, roundish shape. Um, many of you like to use a fan brush, which is fine, um, but filbert brushes for me are a little bit easier to control. So you'll see me using filbert brushes quite often in my tutorials, and once in a blue moon you might see me using a fan brush. But I'm off to the left side now, and notice how I'm going on an angle so I'm starting large at the top and then I'm holding my brush on an angle and making it come down into a point in the center for our focal point which is the path leading to that church and I'm going to keep coming in and adding more white for our snow of course and our highlights later on I'll be adding a little bit of a filter of the peachy colors to make it look like the light is reflecting on the snow but we'll wait until that white dries to do that and you'll see that later on it really adds a nice touch and warmth to this painting I'm just going to wiggle really fast here with my brush to create some soft mist and part of that path i'm going to build this composition up a little bit more now by adding that path in the foreground wider and make it get narrower until it just disappears off into the center of the painting and the distance I'm just adding a little bit more of that blue and then just working out uh, the rest of the paint that's in my brush, which isn't very much. So I'm just doing um, a scumble technique there with my brush and all it does is make it look kind of misty and foggy. And now I've got a long liner brush. You can use any brush of your choice for creating your branches. I like using a long liner brush for my larger branches. Water and I've also got a little bit of that blue and white. So I'm gonna do a combination of these flicks and pulls uh, for my tree trunks that are gonna be skinnier. And then you saw me beforehand doing a thicker kind of a wiggle um, just to add a little bit more movement to some of the branches and make them a little bit larger. I like to have a combination of different sizes and shapes to my branches and my trees and my paintings. I just think it adds more um, uh, character to them, I guess you could say. Now I've got uh, one of my mop brushes. This is an angle one, and this is my favorite one to use. I love the angle mop brushes. I think they make the poofiest, softest looking uh, treetops. And no water at all, just straight paint for this brush and this step, you guys. Uh, and I wanna mention that you guys can use any white that you want. So this is a cool white. I really uh, always actually use a titanium white in my paintings, it's my favorite. Um, but you can use any white that you want and you can even change the temperature of your whites if you have a cool white like this you can change it easily by adding just a little bit of yellow ochre or a warm yellow any kind of warm yellow so i'm going to use this brush right now to start coming in with the lines uh, that are going to be my fence uh, panels and posts so of course i'm going along the theme of larger to smaller uh, for the foreground a really more of a dramatic perspective in this so you can see those lines are getting smaller as they disappear off into the distance uh, along with that path. I'm going to come in and do a second layer of trees and branches now in foliage. So you can see 
where you want your snow to be a lot brighter and you want to have those uh, bushes and branches show up more, you're going to use more paint. So the less paint you use, the more transparent it's going to look and a little bit lighter and softer. But for those nice, nice, bright highlights, you're going to use a little bit more paint. And then I'm just going to gently pull and create a little bit more foreground and land off to the side there. And I'm still not using any water, just straight paint. And I'm going to come in here and add some more uh, heavy snow covered branches on this side that are going to just be kind of reaching up over uh, the fence panels of posts. I'm going to switch over to a smaller filbert brush now and I'm going to add more details to these panels and really kind of get uh, more of the, the light and shadow going and the exact width that I want and the spaces between them. So I'm just going to go over with my white. Uh, if you want you can add a little hint of light blue violet for a shadow and I think I'm going to do that to one or two of these a little bit later on. So remember to make them narrower as they get further away in the distance and smaller, and then wider as they get towards us. Larger, taller, wider for the foreground. That's really gonna help to draw the viewer in and make us feel like we're right there and we're walking in that path. It's very uh, welcoming and it's uh, quite an enjoyable um, way to paint when you work on um, perspectives like this and compositions like this it's really fun and it's also challenging and a really good exercise if you're a beginner painter sometimes we can get uh, including myself stuck in um, painting the same types of trees and the same types of um, compositions and landscapes and and after a while it's like okay well we've mastered that it's not that fun anymore and the reason why is because we're not challenging ourselves so it's good to get out of your step out of your comfort zone once in a while and attempt a different type of composition and landscape uh, that you're than you're used to so hope you guys are gonna try this one today with me it's actually a lot easier than it might seem and I'm here to cheer you guys on and uh, let you know that you can do it step by step with me play back the video at any time leave a question or a comment below and you can see here i'm just adding little dabs sliding my brush a little bit back and forth right at the base of uh, the fence there just to add some snow there and the reason why i really like to paint winter scenes is because you can afford to be a little bit messy you can make little mistakes and easily just add some snow over it and cover it up and it'll look pretty again so i think it's very forgiving when painting winter landscapes and they're just really dreamy and fun to paint i love all the pastel tones and making winter um, feel bringing out the softness of winter and the the magical uh, feeling that it kind of gives me so I hope that um, that's coming across to you guys and the viewers uh, all of you guys watching and making you want to paint it as well here I'm just going to start coming in with a basic shape for my lantern um, it just gets narrower at the base there and then a little bit wider uh, towards the top and then with white in the center thicker than the rest of it a little bit of blue around the edges still just using that little filbert brush Feel free to sketch yours out and measure it if you're somebody that likes to be really accurate with your paintings. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I prefer a little bit looser style and freehand. So I'm going to add black now for the outside and the edges. A little bit narrower right underneath the base there and with a little, little line and then a ball. And then wider at the top and then I'm just gonna simply paint in uh, our freehand like a triangle on the top and then we'll work on our little hook this is really really easy we're just painting shapes and that's all you have to tell yourself it could be uh, you can easily let yourself get intimidated and feel overwhelmed when painting 
um, still life or subjects and structures in your paintings, but all you have to do, and trust me guys, just break it down into shapes, circles, squares, triangles, um, all of that, and light and shadow, light areas, darker areas, just forget about what exactly you're painting, and I tell you guys, if you take this advice, it's going to make painting objects and structures so much easier for you. So just with a little loop on the top there, and then cutting in and pulling over, making it slightly come inside there, and then wider at the top left. I'm going to add snow to that as well, and see, by adding snow to everything, anything that you have imperfect looking in your eyes that you're not really happy with, just add a little snow on top and it's going to look just fine. And now if you really wanted to make this look like those pretty Christmas cards uh, that we used to get back in the day, you could add a little bit of glitter, a fine or iridescent diamond glitter to parts of this painting at the end of it. That would look really beautiful. And you could frame this and hang it up at Christmas or give it away as a gift. So just adding a few little simple lines in there with my liner brush or any brush that you want to use. I'm just going to add a little bit more white, a little bit more gray, and the blue for my shadows. And it's really important to use this shade of blue along with uh, the peach colors we're going to add later on. Because they're so complementary, they look great together. You could use some other blues and uh, other colors if you want. But this, I feel like you just can't beat this color combination. It's just such a beautiful shade of blue. I'm going to just come in and start tapping for my snow first in the blue and then come in with white over top. Again, we want to have the shadows uh, for the snow and our highlights. I'm going to do the same right down all the way down to the ball. It's a very snowy day and there's been quite a snowfall. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be adding it to the hanger and the hook as well. Okay, now it's time to start adding the color for our, our lantern inside. So I'm going to make sure after tapping in the snow, then I really wash my brush out and dry it off. Then go right into my titanium white and a little bit of that neon yellow warm. Now without brushing too much, I don't want to over blend here. I'm just going to dab on in a few areas. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that neon red and add that as well to the neon yellow warm and the white. We'll add little hints here and there, sometimes <clears throat> going over part of that blue. And those colors are going to look so pretty together. It's going to make the lantern look slightly frosty too, uh, which is kind of nice. So just by not over blending, you can create the the look of that kind of frosty and patchiness so just uh, like a little bit here and a little bit there and then of course you know it's really forgiving using acrylics so at any time you can go over and you can paint over your uh, whatever colors that you need to um, and I always do that you know I show you guys too if I have to touch something up or if I make a mistake I leave that in my videos because that is crucial in learning how to paint you can learn how to how to paint correctly, but we're all, none of us are perfect and we're all going to make mistakes. I don't care how many years you've been painting. And if you don't know how to correct those mistakes, then you're really not learning everything you need to because you're, no matter how good of a painter, painter you are, like I said, you're always going to make mistakes. So you've got to learn how you can make those um, little accidents, happy accidents, <laughs> as Bob Ross would say. So... I leave everything in and I show you guys how I do that and I hope you are learning quite a bit more by me doing that. So I'm just going to keep enhancing the color a little bit here and I'm going to start coming in with my church. So I'm simply starting with the base of that light pastel peachy warmth light color. Then I'm going to come in with some shadows and just kind of build this shape a little bit at a time. Now you're going to see the process this takes. So I'm not looking at any photos. I don't have any reference photos. And I'm kind of just making this up as I go along. 
my tutorials, my painting approach is very, very, uh, you could say organic. It's very spur of the moment, unplanned and fresh. And I like, I like being able to share that process with you guys. I don't want to over plan anything too much. I want you guys to be able to see how I approach my paintings, how you can do this. If you just feel like you want to paint, you don't have to plan for days. You don't have to necessarily go out and have a reference photo. You can use your imagination and start freehanding and transforming it one brush stroke and color at a time. So I'm here to hopefully inspire you guys to take a different approach to your painting and use your own creativity and imagination a little bit more. So I'm just going to start coming in on the side now and working on the shape of the roof, my roof line. And this will change a little bit, like I said earlier, and you'll see how I decide to shape, shape this, reshape it, reshadow and highlight, and really make this little church my own. I'm going to add a little scoop and a slant to that roof line. I'm going to add little shadows uh, with my blue violet, a little bit of black. And the black's always going to be blending in slightly to one or more of these colors, so it's not going to be uh, like jet black, right? You don't want pure black because that's too harsh and it's in the distance, so it wouldn't be as dark uh, in contrast as it is on the lantern at the foreground. So here's where you can see I'm going to start to... Uh, I start to take a little bit of that paint off just to reshape and bring this down a little bit lower. You can easily do that with acrylic paint. You can paint over if it's dry or you can kind of just brush it off with a little bit of water and if you catch it right away when it's still a little bit wet you can easily do that. So I'm just going to add another line for uh, the roof on the other side. And like I said before, just simple shapes, rectangles, little squares, angles. I'm going to add uh, all the highlights on my church are going to be warm. So they're going to be a mixture of that light yellow, light uh, neon yellow warm, and a little bit of white. At times I'll add just a hint of that neon red to make that more of a coral, peachy color. And then I'll start working on the steeple and the cross. I'll add a few little steps, which is super easy to do. You just pull a few little lines, one under the other, making them a little bit wider at the bottom. So they get smaller uh, as they go up the stairs and the smallest step will be at the base of the door. So I'm going to work on this steeple now, and then I'll be adding a little shadow. So I'll be kind of outlining it after with a dark gray or a little bit of my blue. And adding a whole bunch of windows. And really just adding little dabs so I'm not over blending. I'm not trying too hard to make anything a perfect square, oval, or circle. When something is really far away, and you can tell in... Um, comparison of size of the church and the lantern. Uh, the lantern is close to us so I have more detail and contrast but the church is far away and much smaller so it's going to be more indistinct in detail and color so I want to keep it soft and slightly blurry that's why I'm not overly detailing um, the shapes of the windows or anything. Now what I want to do is go back to my lantern. I've given it a few minutes here to dry and I can come in with a little bit more saturation, but not too, too much. I just want to play up a little bit more on my blue and the warm hues. So my red, yellow, and white. And I'm going to also just kind of outline the edges of my lantern here, very thin with a bit of black cut underneath again. And then I'm going to apply my next layers of snow so that it really starts to look 3D and I get those nice bright highlights. I 
then I'm going to continue down the base and right at the very bottom of the lantern on that little ball. You can see the warmth starting to come out now because I've got just a little hint of my yellow and red with my white. I've tinted my white just a little bit there and uh, the colors are really starting to complement one another and you're, we're getting that nice um, feeling of soft shadows and uh, that warm light. And I'm going to go ahead and start adding first the highlight on our hook and hanger and then I'm going to start tapping in to make it look like little bits of soft lumpy snow. Now after I've done this step, I'm going to go back over, hop back over to my church and start adding my shadows to make that cross and the steeple stand out a little bit more. It needs a little bit of a shadow just to help it stand out because it's kind of white on white with those trees behind it and it's um, competing with all the other highlights. So I'll show you that in just a second. You'll see how we can change that and make it stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to rinse that brush out and hop over to this church now with my little uh, liner brush. This one's a number one, uh, but of course use any size that you want or feel comfortable with. This is my smallest that I've got and I'm taking a darker gray, so a bit of black with my blue and white. And I'm just going to outline the right side of my steeple and my cross. And I'm going to start outlining very lightly around the windows, more with a, a bit of gray. So you can see I'm just, it was too black there. So I'm coming over and balancing that out in the front with some white. But you can see it stands out. We can see that much better now. So I'm just going to take a little bit of my black and my blue, redefine some of these lines slightly. Again, not... Uh, spending too too much time on getting shapes perfect it's more about light and shadow is what I'm focusing on right now and to make these windows stand out a little bit more I'm going to do that in the front as well I'll then come in and start adding some stairs which I think really brings this church uh, together makes it even more welcoming and um, add a little bit more white here I want to tint my white again with those warm colors even if it's just a little bit, like it may at first glance look like I'm using straight white, but I'm definitely not. There's just a little hint of that uh, warm neon yellow in there. So if you guys don't have any of the neon colors I use on my paintings, just use the next brightest that you have. Make sure your yellow that you're using is a warm yellow, a cadmium warm yellow. And you can use a pink, like a nice bright pink, and a warm yellow with a bit of white and you'll get a really pretty peach color. So you can definitely approach all of these paintings that I do without having to use neons if you don't have them. Now if you're wondering what neon paints I use, I'll leave them in the description below. They're Holbein Luminous Neon Heavy Bodied Acrylics. So as I mentioned before with my stairs, I'm making the lines longer as they get down further towards the path and smaller and smaller till the smallest one is right at the base of this of the door gray and then white for some snow and highlights on top of each step i'm going to continue along by adding my highlights and my colored warm light windows so again just using that neon yellow warm and just a little bit of white a little bit of that neon red and just make those colors stand out a little bit more. I'm then going to go over to uh, my lantern and I'm going to add highlights, more of my highlights to my lantern. And I'm slightly going to just outline a little bit 
of the snow and the lantern itself to make it stand out and look separate from the background. I guess it's kind of the same thing I did with my cross and my steeple on my church, just because of the white and the snow is kind of competing. So you'll see how I do that here in just a moment. I'm going to take a little bit of my dark gray and kind of go around um, underneath here. Just I want to add a little bit more black here first to my, my hanger and my hook. And then I'll be very thinly outlining the snow and the lantern. And it's barely noticeable, but I'm telling you, it makes a big, big difference. So just by doing this, and then I'm going to soften slightly. Just with my little filbert brush, I'm just going to do a light, light scumble, getting right up to that uh, bit of black and gray in there. Add a little bit more of that tinted snow and I'll start coming in and adding some mini little bushes and trees here at the base of my church and then a light scumble or filter just a very thin transparent uh, layer of that warm peachy color So I can come in wherever I have my branches all dry, where I had the brightest white, and I can add that uh, warm tinted white over top, that peachy color. I'm going to take a little bit more of my yellow than white this time. And I'm just going to add a little bit more to make that color stand out. Then I've got one of my oval mop brushes. You can see that it's dry. It's, this one's a one inch. And I'm just going to start making some bushes in the front here with my blue and my white. And just light, soft little tabs, kind of on an angle to help them look kind of rounded and add a little bit of height up here. So it feels like this church is a little bit up on a hill. I'm just going to add a few more here towards us in the foreground. I don't really need to, but I really love using this brush. There's something really satisfying about making little bushes and trees with this this brush so I can't help myself and I just want to keep going here but you guys you don't have to have as many bushes as I do but I think it's fun and I think it looks pretty and if you guys are wondering where I got this brush this is a Princeton I got it from Michaels so they're um, Princeton is a pretty well-known brand and you can find these brushes at most arts and crafts stores I'm just adding a little bit of color to them now, a little bit of that peachy color. I'm going to soften some areas, make it look like it's a little bit uh, blurrier and farther away, and then keep it a little bit more in detail in focus in the foreground. Kind of just using the edge, turning my brush a different way now to add another layer that's in front and closer to us. Just extra layers of bushes and foliage. It's up to you how much you want to add, where you want to add yours. You can just have fun creating and making up your own little worlds. I'm just here to hopefully inspire you guys and kind of guide you along into creating your own uh, types of paintings and helping you learn different techniques and ways you can use your brushes, mix colors. Now I'm just adding the last two uh, fence panels that are underneath and kind of behind uh, the lantern. I left them out originally because I wasn't sure how large I wanted to make my lantern. Um, but now I can easily, you know, just really easily go in and like I did, just slide my brush up and down and uh, add a little bit of white or blue there to make it look like uh, the rest of the fence. I'm going to add a little bit more shadow in between these panels.
And I'm going to add those colors to the base and the foreground for a little bit more shadow as well. So the next thing I want to do is bring in something that I didn't plan on, but this happens when I'm um, painting intuitively like this. One idea leads into a whole bunch of other ideas. It just snowballs. <laughs> and I decided it would look, I thought it would look really pretty to have a little berry branch coming out uh, right by the lantern, a snow-covered berry branch. And I have a lot of the neon red left on my palette, so I decided you know, it's a good way to use it up. It's too hard to put back in the tube. And I thought if it doesn't look nice, then, well, at least I tried. But I had to do it. I had to go for it because I kept picturing it there. And I'm just taking a liner brush, a bit of water, um, my neon red and black, and creating just some thin little wispy branches Nothing fancy. Remember, it's going to be covered up and most of it will be hidden anyways. Like right here, just right away coming in and adding a layer of snow. So I've got my light blue violet and some white that I'm going to kind of just wiggle and add on top. So I'm starting that snow, that layer of snow uh, above and then partially on top of the black and red mixture. Of course, because you need both. We don't want to cover up all of the red and black. We want that contrast and shadow. And then I'm going to be coming in and adding, I'm just going to define this little ball, the bottom of the lantern a little bit more. I'm going to be adding some little dabs, dots and dabs and bunches for my berries. And I'll be using my neon red. I've got some crimson red as well. Um, you can use any red that you want. You can even um, make your berries more on the orange side. There's lots of different reds that you can use. There's viridian, there's... Uh, scarlet red. Um, you could even use like a magenta and have more of a purpley uh, red, a bluey red. Uh, it'll it'll look nice no matter what red you choose. Um, so I'm just going to add my berries wherever I want them. Very messy looking and of course uh, because they're going to be covered in frost, maybe bits of ice and uh, snow so you can afford to be a little bit uh, loose and have and have fun and just relax with this painting and these berries so going in and adding a little bit of highlights now wet on wet I don't mind that it's blending in a little bit to the red I like that because I'm getting a lot of different um, uh, shades in there so I'm getting lighter shades and I'm getting uh, more of a pinky shade at times if there's a bit more white in my brush so there's lots of different uh, shades and, and temperatures going on by doing this and then I'll just tap, tap, tap on for some messy looking bits of snow here. Just being really carefree with this. And I think it was a nice touch to this painting. So I'm going to finish this up before I call it done. I'm going to add a little bit more um, light and shadow to anything else. Maybe a little bit of snow. You can use um, a toothbrush. Toothbrushes are great for creating um, natural looking snow as well as stars in painting. So I like to use a toothbrush. I always have a toothbrush on hand in my studio uh, for creating that spray, that natural spray for uh, snow in my paintings. So I'm just going to add the last bits of shadows, highlights, and final details to this painting. Uh, I may or may not um, add a little bit of snow with a toothbrush. I kind of think it looks pretty like this, so I might just leave out uh, the snow, but at least I let you guys know how you can do that. And I've got lots of tutorials here on my channel, Winter Christmas Painting Tutorials, where you can see me using and I demonstrate how to use the toothbrush a lot. So have fun looking through all of my Winter and Christmas tutorials. I want to wish you guys a wonderful holiday. And if you're watching this in the summertime to escape the heat, well, that's fine too. It's a great way to do it. And uh, I hope you guys got inspired today and learned some fun new techniques. So have a wonderful day, you guys. Stay positive and happy out there. Don't forget to like and subscribe my, to my channel. And I'll see you all soon in another video. Take care, everybody. Bye.